I think you'll like what we're doing today, though. Um, we would like to return today to the idea of a probability distribution. And um, maybe that one's the, this is the first one we should do here, actually. Um, a probability distribution and its properties. And in particular, maybe uh, talk about the notion of expected value, too, along the way. So let's cover those two, let's, let's cover those two things today. This, we'll, we'll work with a little more with some probability distribution functions, make sure we're comfortable with these. Let's start with this just simple problem, right? What, what, what demand must we place on these? If this really does represent the exhaustive list of all of, of all the outcomes, the only things that can happen are zero, one, or two. What can, what demand would you place on uh, these three probabilities? Of course, and that's the set of all things that can happen. And this is truly a probability distribution. Huh? Yeah, my homework will be on the worksheet. I'll give you it tonight, so I don't know what number it is. So it'll be on the worksheet. What's the demand you're going to place on these three probabilities? If this really is a probability distribution, that they, that they, yeah, yeah. So that means that if we add these up, so do that, and tell me what alpha must be then. It'll only take a second once you write that equation, you'll have it solved, right? Did you do it already? Oh yeah, good, good. Well, work it out here for those who haven't done it yet. Work it out, and we'll come back together in 20 seconds. Are you done yet? This is not that alpha. Daisy, tell us what alpha is then. Yeah, did you get one sixth everybody else too? We got 22 over 7. Let's try a slightly harder one. The algebra, the concept is still not super hard, I think. I mean, this still the concept is we need to have them all under one. The algebra is a little trickier here, though. So take, this time, this will take you more than five seconds. Take, take a minute. Huh? So these are all the possible values x can take on. This is what this means, right? only values available in this probability experiment. What equation are we solving? You want to tell me what the equation that you have as a setup? What do I write? Can't keep up. Yeah, right, exactly. So just so we're all on the same page, is everyone solving that equation with us? Is that what we're solving? We need to figure out what K is here. It's not a fun equation to solve, but we can do it, right? Huh? 
Multiply through by what would you like to multiply through by? So all those fractions. What will do the job? Sixty will do it. Sixty. All right, let's do it. Sixty. Sixty. Thirty k. Twenty fifteen. Twelve. Ten. Good, and then what is that equal? 90, 110, 125, 147, 147, okay. So what'd you get for K? Did you get what I got? 60 over 147, okay. So what that's saying is that this probability function we could also write as 60 over 147x, right? Now, we, now there's no mystery as far as what k is. Right. So go ahead then when you're ready here and compute the probability asked for in b. That is the probability that x equals 3 or 4, 4, 5. You see how I wrote that? Those are all mutually exclusive, so I think I can write that. Oh, what are those? That's just 60 over 147 times 3 plus 60 over 147 times 4. Forty-seven. So what you guys getting? Forty-seven over one forty-seven. Okay. Wonderful. No calculator needed here. I know. Not needed. It just makes things so much easier. Mental gymnastics you didn't get to do. Are we good on that one? One of the problems people had, people had issues with over the brain, I had read over so many times that you do it in my head. Okay? I think I did enough as to not to show the brain. That's good. I lost it. Is that good? Are good? question of the day is how do you find the average or the mean of the of, the, of these random variables so of this um, of this distribution uh, that is in the long run what uh, what value of X do we expect or what, what's the average value of, of X one way to conceptualize this I mean I have probabilities I have these values and they come at us with these probabilities which is an interesting distribution by the way um, so I don't know, how, do you want, how do you want to imagine this? Maybe we have 10 people and four of them have a GPA of four. Three of them have a GPA of three. Two of them have a GPA of two and one of them has a GPA of one, sorry. What's the average GPA in the room would be one way to ask the question, right? Or, um, or this also makes me think of like what you used to do before you used deadline helper. Like how would you calculate your grade by hand from category weights? Not an, it's not like you just average them, you, you do like kind of a weighted average, right? It's not just like we do the average of the values, one, two, three, four. You take like the average of the values with these, with these weights. So how do you do it? Turn to the people at your table and just remind them. How, how, how do I do that? Do average? Don't just tell them, don't just, especially staff people, don't just tell them how it's done. Why should it make sense, the calculation that you're, you're thinking you're going to do? I 
Don't appeal to authority. Appeal to reason. So, you do So have you figured out, have you figured out like a good one line explanation for why that works? Expected value is not value. No, no, three. Like you just style, maybe, maybe, maybe <laughs> Expected value is not value, it's the fact that I give them the outcome, it's like the same probability function, it is what you would expect to gain on average, like if you All right, uh, so go ahead, uh, I don't know, Alexis, tell us, how, how, are, you, how are you computing this? You didn't, or do you have a way in on it? What do we do? Thanks for listening here. Let's, what you guys come up with? Huh? Yeah, no, I want to I caution you a little bit. That is correct, and that will get you the right answer. Good job. Yeah. Um, but what if these probabilities are not as nice as this? Like, for example, say this is uh, 0.53, and then this is 0.21, and this is, right? Then I maybe you could assume 100 <laughs> and be like, well, 21 of them are. But, like, that seems like, seems like a little bit going. But you're right. I mean, technically, that, that analysis will always work if you're very, very careful, I guess. She didn't, yeah, she, you're, you're kind of assuming there are 10 people. That's actually not a bad way to go in on this and like assume there are 10 or assume there are 12 people or whatever, whatever you want to do. That would be okay and that will lead to correct results. Or, yeah, maybe this is some experiment and, and you're repeating it 10 times or something. That would be a great way to think about it. What else, what other ways? I mean, I know where you, go ahead, where are my step people? You can just tell me. What's the, what's the way you're calculating this if you like? Go ahead. The sum of x times the probability of getting x. Okay, so in this case, what do I want to, what do you say? So 1 times 1 times plus 2 times 2 times plus 3 times 3 times plus 4 times 4 times. So, yeah, so in general, this provides a little bit more of a, gen, a, like a general method for doing this. Even if we're in this case of, and this, this reminds me of how I would calculate my grade in this class based on category weights, right? I take my... I take my, actually it's not too far off, right? I take my homework grade and I multiply by a 10, right? I take my, I have to think of what our grades are. Uh, my IB probability category and multiply by 0.15, right? I multiply, add that to my test, my quiz grade times 0.25, plus our test grade times 0.5, right? And then that would give me my, my average in this class. Have you tried that before? Yeah. Right, you know, okay, so this is not foreign to you at all. Um, and that will give you, in this case, it comes out very nicely. What'd you get? Three. Three. Now, um, it's not necessarily the case that that will happen. It could come out, as you know, with your GPA or whatever else. So the mean could come out to a value that isn't in the distribution. So I don't want to have you lulled into the thinking that that would be true always. Um, it happens to be a value in the distribution right now. But it's certainly fine for like the average number of children in the US household to be like 1.7. That the no mean, that by no means does that like indicate that if we actually show up at someone's house, we're going to like see 1.7 kids. It means in the long run, on average, if we ask lots of households, what we expect on average that it to be 1.7, right? So here it is with uh, all of its glory, but I thought we'd think about it first just to make sure you understand why, why it is what it is. Um, feel free not to write this down if you like. You can just write this down here with the triple dots. All we're saying is what we just did. Yeah, take value times its probability plus value times the probability for all the values. Um, okay. yes. Go ahead, Ian. Okay. Um, given your explanation, it would be easier to just remember expected value is not necessarily the value you expect. 
Well, but you get it in the long run. expected value in the long run, I think is all. I mean, it's still the ex expectation we have, yeah. It'd be better called average value, but, you know. I think expected value is not a bad term, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go with it. We're going to change seats in a couple days here and I probably will put you right in the front. All right. I should really have that as one of my data things in my chart. I should like have your height and then sort of like that. So already, do you hear three words we're using for this? Expected value, mean, average, those all for us mean the same thing, okay? Can you give us some all? You want more words for the same thing. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Are we good on that? No. Lots of notation for a very simple idea. I hope you see. It's on headlines, too, or uh, what are we using? Pictures are better. <laughs> You're trying to block it? <laughs> Gotta have the raffle in here, right? All right, so $4,000 is the prize. This is very exciting, except it has a probability of, of one 1,000, but okay. Second prize, there's a second prize too, though. Also very rare in its assignment, in its, when, we, when we get that prize. So how does this follow from the previous, previous thing? I guess we need to know what fair means. So fair for us will mean in kind of the game theory sense, like zero sum for, for both the sellers and the buyers of the tickets in the long run, right? So, uh, well, how often, what proportion of the time do we get 4,000? I mean, we could actually make a distribution like we're seeing here. What is the expected, uh, the expected payout of this, of this raffle? I mean, there are two outcomes, and they, I guess there are three outcomes if you think about it. Zero, right? So we have a value of 4,000 that happens uh, one one thousandth of the time, plus a value of 1,000, which happens three one thousandths of the time, plus a value of zero that happens, that happens all the other times, right? But we don't need to think about what that subtraction problem is, OK, because it's going to be zero. So what does this come out to? What's the, what's the payout, the long run per play payout of this game? Yeah, does it come out nicely? Well, this is the, this is the question. Fair for us will mean fair, as in for both parties, right? A fair price to pay for this would be $7, wouldn't it? Because in the long run, that's what the, the person who's running this will have to be paying out if, they, if we do it per play. If we play this every second of every day all our lives, then eventually like, I'm going to be per person $7 in the hole. So that's what I need to pay. But absolutely, obviously, the thing we're actually going to charge is probably $8. And we're running, raising money for, what do we raise money for with the lottery? Something. Charity. Something. Yeah, something beneficial. Something good, I'm sure. I hope. Right? Um, this is uh, certainly this is certainly the thing you think about when you go and you shouldn't probably go play the lottery, right? I mean, really, there should be a warning on lottery tickets. Don't you think? Thank you.